Hey everyone, it's Kate Vaughn with Ascari Art. So my wife finally convinced me to shave. Uh, I guess the quarantine is just wearing on everyone. I was getting a little lazy with keeping it all clean and trim. So uh, she finally convinced me, but that's not the point. I'm super excited about this video. Um, as you know, I love to paint on different surfaces. I paint on poster board for my alcohol ink demos. I do yuppo paper, acrylic, uh, glass. I also paint on carbon fiber, as you can see behind me. But with all these different surfaces, there's a different process in, in giving you the ability to actually paint on it. So for the carbon fiber behind me, uh, what it requires for me to do is I have to seal it with resin two or three times, sand it in between, and then that allows me to paint oil. For canvas and alcohol ink, what I do for canvas is I, I sand it, I paint kills two, I use kills two, and I do two or three coats of that, and I sand in between. And that semi, it, it gives me a semi sealable surface. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Um, and that, that allows the alcohol to stick to it, but not to the point where I can't move it. So in the last video, I show you how to stretch canvas on a stretcher. And in that example video, I was using linen because I mentioned in that video that I have a journey. I'm on a journey to figure out how to seal linen without losing the natural color and texture of the fabric. The reason why I want to do that is because I think it adds a little bit of uh, interest and depth to the painting itself because it's the background. The background has a lot to do with it. Since I'm not completely covering the canvas or my paintings with alcohol ink and I leave areas exposed to either white, I leave either white or leave it with like carbon fiber. Um, I love to leave certain areas unfinished and, and blank. And I think the linen would really help with giving that kind of texture and depth to it. So now I know that you can buy linen already sealed and you can find it. Um, they have it sealed for oil paintings and I'm sure you could probably find it uh, or use that for alcohol ink. However, Linen by itself in its natural state is expensive per yard. It's pretty expensive. So with linen with that sealant even adds more to the cost. And the, the cost isn't everything because I think the reason why I've been on this journey to figure out how to seal this material is because I think it opens up a world of other materials that and fabrics that we'll be able to use uh, without sealing it completely with like kills too with the white look. Um, so you'll be able to seal denim, muslin, silk, uh, just any other, and including linen, and even canvas without losing the natural color and texture of that material. So this is exciting for me. I figured it out. I know the material, and I'm about to show you what I've learned. And we're going to actually do a painting together with this material um, already coated on one of the pieces, the canvas or linens that I have. And I'm going to show you how I'm moving the alcohol ink, how it's allowing me to move it. And then at the end, I'm going to show you what it is that I've used. So let's get started. Um, okay. So I've got two pieces, two canvases here. Um, this is the first one that I've coated with uh, one of the materials. And the second one that I coated is over here, which it looks terrible. Uh, I would never use this material. This is polyurethane. So this is the fast drying polyurethane. It's obviously blotchy. It's, it, it, this was tightly pulled on the stretcher. And when I added the polyurethane, it literally curled it up and it loosened it. So I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I would never use this. And it makes it kind of brittle. Um, it's kind of weird. It, it has a weird feeling to it. Like I can stretch it and then it, it stays there like that. So not good. So I would not recommend polyurethane. Um, the, the second chemical that I would not recommend is Kamar varnish, only because Kamar varnish is expensive and it comes in a spray application. I haven't been able to find it here in a uh, brush application, but knowing that the spray, applica the spray applicator version is so expensive, um, I, it's just not cost worthy for us to, to spray. And you don't want to spray, you want to be able to use something that's brushable, that's application. You use the application by brushing it on. So. Again, I would not recommend Kamar varnish because of the price and the fact that I can't find it in a brush application. 
So here's, the, here's what I've narrowed it down to. So this is the piece of linen that I've already applied the material on, and I'll tell you at the end of the video what it is. Um, but I wanted to show you first, uh, in this little quick painting demo, how it reacts on linen, um, how inks react on linen. So I'm going to do the same thing as I would, uh, as, a, um, as I would if I was to paint. So I'll pour alcohol on it. Um, and I'm not worried about this because I've coated it with two coats. So you'll see these weird spots coming through. That's only because linen, uh, it's, a, it's, it's got pores, it's got um, holes in it, very small microscopic holes. But that doesn't, that's okay because once the alcohol fades, you're not gonna be able to see that. So for this particular demo, I'm gonna add some pink. Uh, I'm gonna add some orange, or this is not called orange, sorry, it's called salmon and some shell. This is called shell pink. And we're gonna move it around and see what we come up with. And I'll show you that this allows you to move it around just like you would any other, just like you would paint alcohol ink painting. So obviously this color is not too bright. Uh, it is bright, but it's just not full of pigment. And let's add a little bit more here. And I usually don't start in the middle, but for this example, I just want to show everyone this example of uh, how this actually allows you to work. And I'm going to add more alcohol. You see how it's allowing me to move it with no problem. Now the problem, the characteristic of linen is the fact that it will seep through um, because it's got little pores. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just moving it around just to show you that this allows me to move it. And I'm going to add another color. I'm going to add pitch black because I want you to really see how this allows you to move it. Now watch this area here. See how it's see how it lets me move? Typically linen would not do that. It would not let you move the ink like that. It would stain it like a jean or like pants, you know, like your pants or denim, you know, like those linen pants um, that men wear. You could stain those very easily and it's kind of hard. It seeps into the 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 linen pretty quickly. So I'm just going to do a quick, I mean, this is just a quick sample to kind of show you that this, can, this stuff does work. Now, like typically I don't like, um, I want to wisp this. So I'm going to wisp this, uh, I'll use a blow dryer because it's faster. And since linen, this is the natural color of linen, like pink and colors that are low in pigment are harder to see but I'll just show you. I'm, I'm just gonna move this around so you can kind of see. The nature of it is a little different only because there are holes in it, very microscopic, or not microscopic, they're small holes. And so it is just a little bit more, uh, it will seep through so it'll use a little bit more alcohol to move. So you can see how easily I can move the ink around and it leaves the texture, which is really neat. So I'm gonna add a little bit right here. I'm not thinking about composition in this piece. I'm just like using this as an example, so bear with me. Um, I may actually start thinking about composition because that's just my nature. I'll, I'll start. It's a good practice anyway for linen. And it's and this gives you an idea of what it can and can't do. And that's the idea for this. Uh, I want to be able to show you what this can do and what the characteristics and how linen reacts. It's a little different than canvas and yuppo paper. 
because um, this is actually seeping underneath and I can show you in a minute. But you're still able to do some really cool stuff with it. Um, so I'm just li literally Now, even on canvas, when you coat with Kills 2, it, it does leave a little bit of a residue, which this is doing. And that's okay, because that's, that's typically like these soft areas right here. There's, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can bring it in. You see this area right here? It's really nice. There's like very soft areas, and that's the idea. So you see how the back, what it's doing on the back, and that's perfectly normal. You're not gonna be able to see it once it's dry, because the ink on the top is gonna to be more dense than on the bottom, um, and that's okay. So let's, uh, let's try something here. I'm just gonna like move this around a bit, do some interesting stuff, fade it down. Now, if you don't like something and you're realizing that, you see how this little blower that I have, you see how it goes in there and it moves it a little bit more in detail so I don't have to use a brush? I mean, you can use a brush. Um, I actually recommend using a brush every once in a while if you need to move something, like uh, if you don't like something that you see and you wanna move it like to the edge or you wanna highlight the edge, I can show you how to do that as well. Um, Again, I'm all about sharing my secrets and tips, so uh, bear with me in a minute. I will get your brush. So I typically use um, a very thin brush, if I could find it. I thought I organized my studio, but I'm always like, since I organized it, I'm having a little trouble finding. Oh, here it is. It's right in front of my face. So here's the brush that I typically like to use for detail. Um, I'll pick like something very small like this. Um, it's very, very fine point. And, and what I like to do is I dip it in the alcohol. And then if I like to, if I want to do some fine detail work, I'll just brush the alcohol in there and release the paint with it. So it'll, it'll release the area that I, that I put it on. See that? So it's, it's, I don't know if you can tell, this area right here, um, over here. So it'll, it'll leave these little fine details. And, and you can do that by just going along the line. If you thin it out, you can do that with gold too. And you can dry it out or you can go in there and drop a couple more drops to loosen certain areas and darken other areas. So what I don't like about, this is my personal, personal opinion, um, what I don't like about alcohol ink when I, when I spread it around um, is the, the little fingers. So if I use the blower and I blow it too hard on here, it'll, it'll cause these little droplets of alcohol that look like fingers. And that's just, you know, it, that's because I blew it, blew it a little too hard with the blower, um, and I'm just not a fan of that. So I'll add a little bit of ink there and possibly maybe just a hint of black. And I wanna just kind of break it up. See these little fingers right here? So what you can do is use a, a brush and just go in there and move it around. Don't be afraid to use a brush because not all of it is, is haps. Some of it is, um, some of it is haps, like haps as in uh, it just happens that way. Um, so use your finger. I'm using my finger to kind of clean these areas and give it a little bit more uh, depth. Cleaning the edges a bit. Again, I don't think 
uh, a lot of I've only I only know one person who uses uh, linen, and I want to thank her for helping me figure it out. Uh, she gave me good guidance. Her name is uh, she's on Instagram. Her name is Kipple Art, um, and you should check her out. She's awesome. She's the one who guided me in the right direction to. She told me that there is linen out there that's as coated. After I searched that, I was like, oh man, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to pay for the linen. I want to be able to do this with other fabrics as well. So thank you for that, uh, Kipple. That really helps. And you're helping the alcohol ink community by sharing your knowledge with me. And in turn, I, I share it with the world. Once I figure out what um, we use, what the best method is to use for this. Now she says she buys um, coated linen already made. I didn't even know that existed um, until she told me about it. And then I thought, well, I'm gonna do more research and figure out what I can use to coat it. And then I'm gonna share that with the alcohol ink world. So I give her props for helping me um, with my journey to figuring out what to use. So thank you, Kipple. So, Okay, so I'm gonna say maybe this is done, all right? So now I'm gonna add a little bit of gold. And I typically, you know, there's some that add gold as they're painting, and that's cool. Um, that's really cool, actually. I, I do that sometimes, um, but I'm gonna do that I'm not completely done, so I may actually move some of this around. So I have another dropper here that I use for the gold. And what I'm using right now is pinata brass, and that's my favorite gold, it's actually, the closest to gold I've ever found. Um, and, and you'll see, it is, it's beautiful how it works. Um, but it's called brass, so that's a, kind of misleading if you ask me. So I'm just gonna drop that there and see if I can move it around a bit. Okay. I don't like this, so I'm gonna to try to move. I add more alcohol to just move it around where I want. So it's doing the little finger stuff, which I don't like, so that's okay. Uh, let's add a little bit more, and I'm gonna use my little, where did it go, my little blower. So I'm just literally spreading it out. Um, I will add color in a minute. Let's add some of this uh, salmon color here and a little bit of pink. Oh, I'm sorry, shell pink. Because I want it to mix with the color so it doesn't look like it's just laying in. Um, So I'm not done with this because I'm not liking some of the composition. So <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I'm going to change some of it. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to soften the edge up because I'm not really liking that area. And I'm going to add a little bit of black to it, pitch black. When in doubt, Use black, I'm just kidding, don't do that, don't. Um, pitch black is great, I would. Um, not always use black. Um, sometimes though on this, I think you want a little bit of a pop, so I would use pitch black for that, to just give it the pop you want. Okay. So I'm gonna let this dry, and then I'm gonna go in and uh, reapply more alcohol. And now, I'm gonna start using the brush, because I wanna get a little bit of more detail 
out of this. I like some of the lines that are happening, but I'm not too fond of what I'm seeing. So I'm going in there and just adding, I'm going along the edge. Adding a little bit more detail. So again, if you're not happy with something, which right now I'm not really too happy with that right side. If you're not happy with something, don't be afraid to change it. And that's what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna change that because I'm not too fond. And if you have trouble with the gold, because it's kind of spread out, you can use a brush to move it. Don't be afraid. So use a brush and just lift it off the linen or the canvas. Um, in this case, it's linen. Don't be afraid to move it around and lift it off the, off the canvas. And I'm just dipping my brush and moving it. See how easy it is to just lift the paint right off the linen? I bet you're wondering what it is. And I'm so excited to be able to tell you. Um, you can always fast forward to the video, through the video to see. Um, but I really encourage you to watch because it helps. I'm sharing tips as I go, and that really helps for you fellow alcohol ink artists who may not, um, either beginners or ones who may not know some of these tips. So all I'm doing is using a brush to go in there. And just add some of my lines of detail. See like this stuff I'm not too fond of. So just dry it out. So the only thing you should watch out for when you're doing uh, alcohol ink on linen is the fact that since it's got, the weave is not as tight as canvas, uh, the air will go right underneath it and, it and it kind of plops it up a bit. Um, so you just have to be careful for that. And so now what I'm doing is just adding even more detail with my little with my little Giotto lens cleaner here. I'm just adding a bit more detail. So 
some of the areas that I'm not too fond of. See, I like, I'm very, I'm very much a fan of soft edges for my paintings. I like all of it to kind of bleed into a soft edge of some sort. doing that, why I'm doing that is I'm just trying to balance, I'm trying to break this area up a bit because it is too much, uh, and this is the gumball. Can't let fear of ruining it affects you, you know, because this is alcohol ink and you're able to luckily move it. It's not like oil paint where you put it on, it's hard to take off because, you know, you've got, you gotta wait for it to dry before you can even mess with it or you have to use a pallet knife and lift it. So that's where, that's the beauty of alcohol ink in my opinion, um, is that it's so fast in drying. Um, it's got advantages and disadvantages, the fact that it's fast at drying. Um, the advantage is obviously you can lift it and move it and you know what you're gonna get. Um, the disadvantage is <laughs> it dries too fast and you don't have time to move it and you have to decide on what you want um, as quick as possible. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple more things here to it um, because I, I'm not done with it. So right now what I'm doing is I'm lifting the gold off. Let's dry this out. One more small thing. So again, I'm using this brush to just add a bit of detail to the areas that I'm not liking. Trying to break some of it up. And I've, I do this a lot. I, I look at it compositionally and I go, you know what? I don't like this line here, so I'm gonna move it. And or I like this line, I'm gonna embellish it. So embellishing it, you basically, um, you're making decisions as you go through this. So, you know, like for example, embellish a line. If I like, let's say I like this gold right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some alcohol ink next to it and kind of push it towards it so that it gives me that stronger line right over here with the pigment. 
gold is just a little bit difficult, more difficult because it's it's basically like micro pieces of glitter. So all I'm doing now is just adding lines to this. You just have to add more alcohol for linen than the regular. A regular canvas, that is, or yuppo. It's a little different because the alcohol is literally seeping through, like I mentioned earlier. I don't know if you saw that. Let me see if I can somehow zoom in so you can see. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm gonna try doing my best so you can kinda see what I'm working with. Okay. So what I mean by drawing the line, so if I don't like this line right here, or if I wanna add a line here, I'm just gonna put some alcohol ink there and watch. See this line right here? Okay, watch. So if I don't like, like let's say I wanna add a line here, I'll pull it, I'll put some alcohol down and literally it's hard because it's drying before I can even bring the blow dryer in. You see how I added that line of detail um, in it? So it looks like haps, but in actuality, there is a lot of you know areas where you have to decide. Well, that's how I paint. Um, a lot of others may not paint that way because I, I do like to have some control, uh, decision-making control in it. So I'm going to take this black line and bring it all the way through this purple. And just push it kind of through and hopefully it dries so you can kind of see See that? All right, okay, so this is the piece. Let me see if I can uh, lighten it up so you can kind of see. Okay, so this is pretty much the piece. And it turned out nice, I guess. Uh, that's just good for a demo. The ability to clear or to, to ability to seal any kind of material that I can think of fabric related. So silk, muslin, denim, um, linen for sure, and possibly cotton. I'm gonna actually test it on sheer, so I'm excited about that. But this is what I use. So there's a bonding primer called Kills Clear. Now, I didn't even know this existed. I asked people at Lowe's and Home Depot and hardware stores, if they had anything that was clear, like kills, like the, the, what kills does, do you have anything that, that is like kills that's clear? And everyone would recommend, most people would recommend either polyurethane, this stuff, or um, they would say, no, I, I don't know. Well, after I found out that linen is obviously sealable, 
Um, and I started looking for an acrylic clear primer. And once I found, once I started looking for that, I found that Kills actually has a clear. And it's an exterior primer. It does the same thing. It's a multi-surface sealer and it's transparent. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this stuff yellows. I know that it's water-based, so I know that typically oil-based primers like Kills, Kills that's oil-based, or Kills 2, I think they have, or 3 can be oil-based. Those are white, and white typically tends to yellow when it comes to oil-based white paints. That's why I typically recommend Kills 2 acrylic. Now, and that's water-based. This is water-based. So I'm not sure exactly if it will yellow over time or um, I, I'm just not sure. I don't think it will yellow. All I know is it, it seals so well. I used, to seal this, I used two coats. So this is two coats that I used just a standard brush and I, I brush the application. So now when you brush it on the first time, it's cloudy, it's milky. So you wanna make sure, um, don't worry about it. Just, just brush it on and let it dry. Once it dries, it becomes clear and you won't even be able to tell it's on there. The only difference that I feel is just a little stiffer and I can feel a little bit in the texture, but that's it. And since this is linen, I don't recommend sanding it like I would if it was canvas, but um, you wait for it to dry and then you apply another coat. Now, I only did two coats on this and it's moving alcohol fairly well. The other um, thing that you can do is you can seal both sides. If you're worried about the back looking like this, you can always seal both sides. But as you can see here, you can't see those dots on the, ends, on the front side because the sealant, I guess, leaves it on the other side because this side is not sealed. I didn't seal this side. I only sealed the front. Now, if you're worried, you could probably seal both sides and that will give you a really nice finish. All right, everyone. So it's kind of hot and sweaty, uh, as you can see here, uh, just painting. Uh, I don't know something about these lights. It's just hot in here, it gets hot. Um, and just the focus and the blow dryer and all that jazz, so it gets hot. So here's the final piece uh, that I just came up with. It's, it's obviously got gold in it and it's very light. I'm not sure if you can really tell, but uh, I'll, I'll post some pictures on my blog so you can kind of see the detail. And again, I hope some of the tips worked. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe. You could really help me out with that. There's a little bell, you can hit the bell. and It'll make a little ding sound. Well, it does here. Um, and I'm so excited. I can't wait to see some of the art. And I really, really thank you for joining me on this journey to find out what we can use to seal linen and what other fabrics can we do. So I may do some denim. I may do some muslin. Actually, right now I'm going to do some sheer. That's next. So, and you're going to watch me paint. So stay tuned, excited. Take care. Ascari Art.